Hello community, welcome to a 100% competition review of Freelancer. Now the name is a bit misleading, since although I am level 100 and I have completed the vast majority of the challenges, there are a couple that are impossible in this time, as they take months to do. Now firstly, as always, we gotta start with the maps. Now I did a video a while back ranking them, however, now that I am level 100 and have eliminated over 50 syndicate members and leaders for every single map, I believe there are some changes that need to be made. This is my new tier list. Now, I'm not gonna be going into detail on every single map, as that would take forever. Instead, I'll focus on the category and their meaning. Perfect means the map works great for both regular Syndicate members missions, as well as showdowns. These are the maps you usually want to leave for last to have the easiest time in the showdowns, and they also work great for regular missions too, so it's a win-win. Then we move on to the good category, which in my opinion are maps, that are great for regular Syndicate members, but you really don't want to have showdowns on. New York, small map, but with a lot of added NPCs. It can be very difficult to isolate certain targets. Wilton Creek, probably the best map you can play, however, for regular Syndicate members, not on showdowns. Because the map is so small, it's often very difficult to isolate targets, because there are far too many NPCs in a small area, as well as they're constantly entering different trespassing territories, which means you have to constantly change it to different disguises to keep up with them. Sapienza has a great mansion area, but suffers because of the awful lab area. The lab area is basically a small Colorado. You can get spotted from everywhere. Suit only is extremely difficult, and even with disguises, you have to play like you are suit only, because there are so many enforcers in that tight area, it's very difficult to avoid them. Plus, the ruins start and location itself is pretty bad. Overall, Sapienza has too many consistent weaknesses in order to be perfect. And Chongying also, for its lab barrier in combination with the different factions, constantly requires different disguises. Then we get to just okay. These are the maps you can play for regular Syndicate members when you have to. They aren't great, but they aren't bad enough that you need to actively avoid them most of the time. Hokkaido is overly restricted and difficult to traverse, but with some map knowledge, you can succeed most of the time. Iowa's Gale, much better without the Washington sisters as main targets. Haven Island is just fine as long as you're careful and avoid the mansion area. And Ambrose Island is a good map, though very difficult and requiring a lot of attention and effort in order to play accordingly and not get yourself killed. The next one is play only if you have to. These are the maps that although you don't actively want to play, if the package is good and you get a lot of perfect and good maps with one of these, you just play it and get it over with. These aren't bad enough that you need to full out avoid them, but at the same time you really don't want to have too many of them into the same campaign. These are the maps that tend to be both unpredictable, difficult to traverse, often bug ridden and with wonky targets. And finally we have avoid at all costs with of course the one and only Colorado. This map is awful in every way, one mistake and you're gonna get gunned down instantly, extremely easy to get spotted from pretty much everywhere and also lacking in terms of both good entries and exits. Ayuk has made a lot of them worse on purpose by adding extra NPCs and also removing important items. I remember in Paris on hardcore mode, I had a target that was only going around in public spaces drinking wine, so I went to grab some rat poison from the basement and of course, Ayu had removed it. The frustration this mod can cause to people is beyond infuriating. Removing important items only makes the game actively worse and more unfun to play. Next up, let's talk about the targets. And although random, there are only a certain number of them. I'm sure if you've played long enough, you've had the same target multiple times. Overall, they differ greatly, from nice and easy to damn near impossible. I remember, in Santa Fortuna especially, there would be certain targets that would just sit around the main area and you couldn't do anything to get them away from it. If you shot them with a seeker, they just move a couple of steps over to the garbage can and you'd be in the exact same predicament. Overall, targets vary all over the scale. However, from my experience, most targets were well done and had at least some weakness that you could use to your advantage. And if you have some patience and decent observation, you shall find some weakness in the route or loop. Alright, it's time to talk about the challenges. So, over here in the challenges, 50 Syndicate members, this is self-explanatory. Most of these are self-explanatory, to be fair. Leaders with headshots, any weapon will do. SMG, sniper, pistol, doesn't matter, as long as you're getting uh, that taken care of. 
we will get the challenge. We keep going, this is just locations. Now, on the move, for this one, you can do it to the same target if you want to, just out F4, but it's very simple. You basically just uh, find who your target is, you can lure them, and then when you lure them somewhere in a private area, you can scare them and kill them. It's simple, and you're gonna get this pretty easily. Over here, tea time. Uh, syndicate leaders pushing them over a ledge. So for this one, what I would recommend you to do is to find a single target that is very easy to eliminate in this manner and then just out F4 and keep doing it. Like literally, just keep doing it, it will count. So you can cheese it like that, just keep doing it and get it over with. This is a challenge that's kind of difficult because, you know, it's not easy to find targets that are, you know, too easy to eliminate in this particular manner. So I would say if you find one, basically just get the challenge done entirely with that one target. Natural selection. So this challenge is completely screwed up and I'll tell you why. The only way to get this challenge from my personal knowledge and the way I got it is you have to go to Santa Fortuna and find the Leto flower that is located in the jungle and you need a uh, syndicate leader that is either a foodie or is uh, dehydrated and then you poison the drink or food depending on you know what they are and that's how you get this challenge. Then you out the four and you do it all over again and you do that 10 times. That's how you get this challenge. It's the only way that I know Frogs don't work. I've tried frogs. They do not work. I've tried everything you can imagine. I've tried a medic flower, turning on a medic flower into poison. Nothing else works for me personally. I mean, some people have said certain things, but I can guarantee you Santa Fortuna's flower will work. So if you get Santa Fortuna, you, if you have a foodie target or a dehydrated target and you get Santa Fortuna as one of your missions, leave it for last and get this challenge done through there. Welcome to Haven. Simple stuff. Uh, this proximity explosive, you just have to have a proximity explosive in your freelancer too. That's pretty much it. Paris, uh, leaders with poison, this can be lethal syringe, it can be whatever. I would recommend lethal syringe, it's the easiest way to do it. Uh, Mumbai, bullseye, so 25 syndicate leaders with a sniper rifle. The way I would recommend you to do this is if you have, for example, Paris, if you start from the very top of the crane and you have a sniper rifle and you have an easy uh, sort of... Um, target, an easy leader that you can kill, just out the four and grind it out. That's what I would do. I mean, that's, I'm not saying that's what I did. I'm just saying that's what I would do if I was you. I don't remember how I got this challenge show particularly. Um, it was a bit, but uh, I believe it was something like that, where I just got an easy target and I just kept shooting them over and over again. 47 syndicate members of leaders with Kitana. Funny, funny how they made it 47, but this one, again, it's just, you're just going to be bringing a Kitana pretty much on every mission and you're going to grind this challenge out. It's as simple as that. 25 syndicate leaders in accident. Now, accidents mean a lot of things. It means pushing them over a ledge. It means drowning them in a toilet. It means all types of different eliminations. So accident kills are not too difficult to create. So this is a challenge that you're probably gonna get naturally just through playing. Uh, remote explosives, again, you're gonna have to have it in your freelancer tools to do that. Eat the rich, New York, Ambrose Island. This is just 500 syndicate members. It's gonna take some time. Sapienza, Marrakesh. Uh, leaders with fiber wire, it's just gonna take some time. As I said, find one target that is very easy to do and just grind it out throughout the four. Just you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna go for a competition, the best way to do it is just to cheese it. I mean just get it done. Then over here, GOAT and employee of the year obviously take a while. These aren't done. I don't think anybody's been able to achieve these particular challenges because they are they take a while. I mean they, they're lengthy. Eventually you can do them, but it just takes time. Sturlock or Strelock or whatever the name is. Simple stuff, again, like I said earlier, find a mission where you have three to four targets and you can easily eliminate them with a sniper and then just get rid of them, out that four, do it again and just grind it out, baby, just grind it out. 10 syndicate leaders while they're performing a tell. For this particular challenge, um, I can't remember how I did it. I think you have to wait for them to be in a meeting with another person, but I got it, I believe uh, the last time that I got it, like the 10th time that I got it, I scheduled the meeting and I just killed them when they came for the meeting and I got it anyways, poetic justice. I did it with a prank call, so this challenge is a bit strange. Um, it just sort of works somehow, you just sort of get it, you know what I mean? But I think through prank calls you can get it easily. Finish line Miami, great mission. 10 syndicate members or leaders with little pills, nothing too crazy going on over here. All you have to do is just get them in your uh, freelancer tools. Colorado, the less said about that the better, 50 syndicate members or leaders. Then, a necklace to die for. For this one, you're gonna have to use a fiber wire, anything that works like a fiber wire. If it's not a fiber wire, it can be a pair of headphones, it can be a fishing wire, whatever you can get your hands on. And you're gonna use that to strangle um, any target that has a necklace on, any leader that has a necklace on, and you get it. 
syndicate leader with an item retreat from a suspect. So for this one, this is a handover meeting. Some will give you a medic tools. However, at the same time, if you, uh, for example, if the person you knock out doesn't give you a lethal tool, then what you can do is you can schedule a meeting and just keep knocking them out and see who is able to drop what. And eventually you should find a bomb, some remote or, pro or proximity explosive, whatever, uh, or maybe even a taser, and that will allow you to take care of them. And of course, you know, the American classic, you have a burger in the suburban dreams, Wilton Creek, my favorite map, one that I enjoyed very much. Cat burglar, crack 100 saves, collect gear from 100 stashes. I'll be back, all you have to do is just get killed. You get killed and as soon as you respawn, you get this challenge in the suit. Ave Maria, so for this one, exit the safe house towards uh, the uh, river. And instead of going left where the boat and the fishing uh, part is, go right. Just go right and head right and you'll find like, um, like a small little carpet, I guess, on the floor. And you're gonna meditate. And it's gonna take around 5 minutes. Basically, you press the meditation button, he's gonna go into a stance. And then when he does, when he sits down on the ground to meditate and Ava Maria starts playing, it's gonna take around 5 minutes to get the challenge. So just take off your headphones if you're wearing them, just get off your PC or console and just go do something else and in 5 minutes times you should have this challenge completed. Safe house supply crate, crack 100 saves. Burning Man, the best way to do this is to get the oil canister and also lure targets with the phone. So just like knock out a target, take the phone, schedule a meeting and just knock out as many suspects as you can and just, you know, keep grinding that out and you're gonna get it. But yeah, it's not my favorite challenge. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me personally, but it is in the game, it is what it is. Collect 10 SMGs for your safe house, simple stuff, 10 campaigns, sick games and stuff like that. I don't even need to talk about these things, you can see them on screen, you know what they are, nothing crazy here. Assassination syndicates, 25, eliminate assassins, you can do this without the 4, just grind it. Sometimes maybe good, sometimes maybe shit. Now this is not a challenge I've completed and I'll tell you why. First of all, to get this challenge, you have to go on a showdown and you have to fail, you have to get killed. Now a game mode that requires you, that you basically get fucked in the ass every time you lose, wants you to lose 10 times not just uh, get killed 10 times, but on a fucking showdown. So all your freelancer tools, half of your mercies, everything you've worked so hard for, all of it gone in flames for no fucking reason, for a challenge that is worth 1000 XP. I can do this challenge, it's not a problem. I can get it done in a single day. In a single day, I can have the challenge completed. However, I will never touch freelancer again, because why the fuck would I? All my freelancer tools are gone, all my mercies are gone. Why the fuck would I ever play it again? You know what I mean? This is not a difficult challenge, it's idiotic. Whoever put this challenge in the game is a moron. It should be 1 out of 1, not 1 out of 10, it's ridiculous. A challenge that requires you to actively fail is so stupid to me. I, 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 can, I can talk a lot, but uh, let's just leave it at that. Complete a syndicate. Lethal poison, you can do this with a syringe. Just find a suspect, kill him with a syringe and get it done. Lose 50k by failing a mission. Um, I've done it, but not on not on purpose, but this can happen. It's only one time anyways Eco crime hardened assassin Eliminate syndicate leader within 60 seconds. So here's how to do this You find who the syndicate leader is right you you get 100% certain This is the syndicate leader then you out the four you go back into the game and you kill him immediately with a sniper or Any any item that's gonna allow you to just kill him instantly and you get the challenge and that's how you do it basically 10 pistols arms trafficking syndicates 25 lookouts Difficult, it takes a bit of time, but uh, it is doable. Hard mode, uh, professional mode. Let's go hunting, just collect shotguns, 47 firearms. Syndicate leader during a meeting. This is very self-explanatory and you only have to do it once. You just have to find who the leader is, wait for him to get into a meeting. He will get into a meeting, 100%, just wait. And as soon as he does, you can get rid of him and you get the challenge. Let the chips fall where they may. Eliminate 50 suspects. Now, this can be difficult, but if you have a sniper rifle and a good vantage point, just start eliminating people. Out the four and just keep doing it. And just keep doing it until you get it. That's all I recommend. Eliminate a syndicate leader in nine different territories. Um, that's just normal gameplay. You're gonna get it. Difficulty 2, PSYOPs. Uh, this is basically the silent assassin requirements. High target bodies, high target bodies timed, no bodies found, for cameras. This is just... If you play Silent Assassin, you're gonna get this um, without even thinking about it. Eliminate all suspects in a showdown. Like I told you earlier, the sniper rifle in a good position. The easiest way to do it, of course, is in the first couple of showdowns. You have only four targets, you have only six targets. It's very easy to get it done um, in the beginning. 
up close and personal, collect melee weapons. Slow but steady, this will take a while as you can tell. You know what's funny? I am level 100, right? And I am 24 out of 50. So in order to get 50 out of 50, I'll have to like get to level 200. I'll have to like do double what I've done this far. And I have a feeling that's not gonna happen. I have a very strong uh, feeling about that. Anyways, these are simple stings. Leaders with legendary gear. Uh, legendary gear, that's your pistol, basically. Or a knife. You can use a knife. There's also a legendary knife, but a pistol is the easiest way. Silver baller, gold baller, short baller, all legendary. Easy to do. 10 time prestige objectives. Simple stuff. Prank caller. So this challenge is a bit problematic. It doesn't always work. Sometimes you're gonna call and sometimes it's gonna count and sometimes it's not. I mean, it is what it is. It doesn't... It doesn't matter whether you, the leader is still alive or not, because I've gotten it after I've killed the leader, and I've not gotten it before I've killed the leader, so it makes no difference. It really doesn't. It's one of those things where it's completely random, you know, at least for me, it was completely random. Sometimes I got it, sometimes I didn't. I really don't get this challenge. The Hitman, completed campaign in hardcore mode, sound sauce some payouts, syndicate eight different types, five alerted showdowns, you're gonna get this in hardcore mode, uh, almost. It's gonna, you're gonna get four in uh, hardcore mode, and you're gonna have to do one more. Organ trafficking, home sweet home, just reaching it, 100 payout objectives. Uh, exit without eliminating all targets. Uh, this sucks because it alerts the entire territory. It basically alerts your uh, showdown, and it alerts everything else. So you're actively fucking up your game. And here's the deal, if this was like maybe five or ten, I would probably go for it, because I'm like, okay, it sucks, it screws the gameplay, but I can grind it out. However, 20 times, I mean, that's like, that is six campaigns. That is six campaigns, uh, over six campaigns, in fact, that you have to uh, basically exit early and completely fuck up your campaign. Six times, more than six times, to get this challenge. It's just not worth it. And then we have Top Dog for the people who just cannot get enough of Freelancer. And um, by the time I'm done with this playthrough, I think you'll find out that I'm not one of those people. But anyways, those are the challenges. And in my opinion, uh, they are grindy as fuck. Moving on, now we're off to the unlockables. And here, there is quite a bit of them, so I'm not gonna spend time on every single thing. It's literally gonna take an hour if I spend time on every single thing. Instead, I'll just focus on the things that matter as I make my way through it. So, increase gear gap. Oh, here it is. Ornamental pistol. So, a cool looking pistol, but unsilenced, which means it's no good. I wouldn't even use it uh, anytime you have unsilenced pistol kills, because you can just take it from a garden instead of uh, wasting a gear cap. So, there's no point. You don't want to waste a gear slot uh, for an unsilenced pistol. Two really cool motorcycles. Both cruisers. One is a chopper. This is the chopper. Pretty decent. Uh, a cool assault rifle. Very useful. I believe it doesn't take that much space in your loadout. It doesn't take any more space than the regular assault rifle of this type. So overall, this is a good unlock, definitely something to uh, look out for, and it's free, it's completely free, you don't have to buy it, so it's definitely good if you don't have the exact amount of money to get it uh, early on, especially at level 10. Then we start moving on, we've got boats, cars, I am gonna try to speedrun this shit, we got a helicopter, ornamental katana, very good looking katana in my opinion, and a katana is useful, there are challenges, as you saw, for the katana where you have to use it. So overall, a very decent unlock. You can do some good things with it. Moving on up, moving on up. We got two boats, a black one and a brown one. So much ingenuity. Then we're off to the ornamental shotgun. Very strong shotgun, probably the strongest shotgun in the game in, in terms of it's silenced. And also it doesn't require a ton of slot space. So overall, it's a pretty decent unlockable, very good. We move on through, we have a... Uh, this is for burial arrangements, not something... I mean, unless you have a very dark sense of humor, I wouldn't take this with me. Then you have a nice sports car. It's a miracle that this thing is able to <laughs> drive in the forest, where 47 is, but there we are. Ornamental SMG. Now listen, I think it looks decent. I think it's a decent looking SMG, but at the same time, the Duck X2 Covert Special is the only SMG you should ever bring with you. It's silenced, you can holster it. Those are two things that pretty much make it the best, and it's also an epic, so it's pretty much an all-rounder. So although it's good looking, not the most useful thing in the world. We have an ADV, this is a pretty um, cool unlock, especially if you're going around the forest, you know, trying to catch illegals coming into your country. This is a pretty good uh, vehicle, I'm kidding, of course. 
Uh, this is a sniper rifle, um, I think you can tell. Decent looking sniper rifle and very useful. Again, if you don't have money for the ghost at this point or you haven't gotten the ghost, this is a very good strong alternative that is also free. So overall, very very good here. We keep moving on up. We have the Justin Bieber suit. So if you're a big fan of Justin Bieber, you want to look like just like him, then uh, you have the perfect suit now, you can do so. You know, who would have ever imagined. We got a nice little um, twin engine red boat. We move on up, we got the Kronstadt helicopter, I guess uh, Sierra isn't gonna need it, so you might as well have it. Moving on up, oops, we have the Ancestral pistol. Uh, this is basically like a Krugemeyer, it's like a reskin, but it's a very decent pistol and it's free, which is very important. It's black, it has cool ornamental things, and when you unlock an item, whether it's an outfit or a weapon, in Freelancer, you will also unlock that weapon slash item in the main game as well. So this is a pretty, in my opinion, good looking unlock. Not the most useful pistol, still the Silver Bowler, Gold Bowler, and a Short Bowler, because they're legendary and they take only a single gear slot, will be more useful than this but it's better than nothing if you don't have them uh, yet, basically. Moving on up, moving on up, oh well. Ancestral shotgun, looking up. So, this shotgun, decent looking, I don't think it's bad looking shotgun, but at the same time it's not silenced and you can't hide it, so about as unoptimal as you can go, not a good thing. This is an easter egg, I'm not sure if it was blood money, but in one of the Hitman games when you're sneaking through a vent, you can see a bunch of rats playing cards. So this is an easter egg to that, it's very cool. Uh, from there we have this assault rifle, not silenced and uh, that pretty much makes it useless in comparison to the other ones. A silenced assault rifle is always gonna be better, always, no matter what, so don't even waste your time. Moving on up, we have this, uh, if you feel like a stalker slash kidnapper slash murderer on the prowl, this is the vehicle for you, my friend. This is the vehicle for you. I mean, they say that it's a stereotype, but if you've ever seen like real life serial killer documentaries, it's that, that stereotype exists for a reason. I mean, let me just tell you that. We have this ancestral sniper rifle. Decent looking sniper rifle, unique looking enough with the textures, it is silenced, does have an animation, but overall um, it is good looking in my opinion. If you do like it, you can bring it with you. As long as you don't need a quick uh, sniper rifle, because at the end of the day, that animation will slow you down. From there we have this ancestral knife. I love the way he's holding it. You can't see the actual grip, which is like the only thing that's probably customized. So yeah, that's absolutely fantastic. Just just marksmanship right there in terms of photography. Anyways, moving on up, we got uh, this little car. I can't remember who... There was a certain famous character that used to have a car like that, but I can't remember. It wasn't Mr. Bean, it was somebody else. Anyways, we're moving on up. Oh, there it is. If any of you feel like a quintessential British man, then congratulations, Ayu has decided to reward you with this suit. You're gonna look like a, uh, a golfer, in my opinion, but still, it is, uh, I guess, British styled. Not that I'm an expert, but uh, it definitely is something new. You, you would imagine you'd get this suit somewhere in Dartmoor, but here it is. Then we got this little uh, water jet going on, it's green, I really like the color, lime green, pretty decent. Not bad at all. We have a pink crocodile, and it is a crocodile, because if you look at the front of his face, it's uh, like a knife's edge. An alligator is rounded at the front of the face, so this is definitely a crocodile, which is far more dangerous than an alligator. Alligators are a lot more chill, uh, they don't like humans, crocodiles are predatory, so just keep that in mind. I mean, they're both dangerous if you're close enough, but anyways. We have this for the meditation, another one for the meditation, this is very good looking as well. That's where you get a tranquility challenge. We have this seaplane, pretty decent looking, you know, I don't... I think it's got gotten stuck in the mud, looking at the picture, I don't know if you're gonna be able to get it out of there, but... There it is, you know, you got a little seaplane. Moving on up, moving on up. I love that you have pool. Forty Agent 47 lives entirely on his own, by himself, and he has a pool table. Like, so he can play against himself, I guess. I just love that. You know what I mean? It's just like so many extra things. L look at that. Like, why would you have that if you're entirely on your own? You know, like, is he gonna have a family with Diana? Like, what is this for? Why are there so much stuff, so many sofas and things? I don't know. Anyways, let's go back from this beginning. Over here. Moving down. We have this uh, little Jeep. It's not little, but it is a Jeep. It's like... um a Hummer, basically. It's consistently ugly throughout the range of all of its vehicles, Hummer, so it's no wonder it's made its way into Hitman, so there it is. 
moving on up we have this black little stealth boat it's pretty decent looking it i don't know if it's lighting or if it has those like two white lines across it if they added another line it would be proper slav material but sadly only two lines you know it, it needs that extra line to really get that uh street cred anyways moving on up moving on up moving on up and we got a really cool little sort of a stealth black helicopter if you want to gun down this is not call of duty but it definitely looks like something out of call of duty it's pretty good looking it's interesting i like the red light and everything it is definitely intimidating looking and it's pretty cool moving on up we have a rainbow shed for those of you who you know are a little out there maybe you know you're represented fully then we have this little car it's not little again but it's a car and it's uh miami it's a reskin of the miami uh, racetrack and uh, it's a pretty decent car you know it's uh great looking again i question how you're gonna be able to get this car uh, into the forest because 47 lives in the middle of a forest so i don't know if you're gonna ride that thing this thing you can't uh, these are racing cars you see how low the bumpers and everything is to the ground you can't ride a car like that well drive not ride i'm coming from the motorcycle world it's you but driving you can't drive this thing in a forest i mean you're gonna break it into pieces on, on anything and everything i mean that that just does not fit but anyways now we got another helicopter this is a little bit more um you know i guess um for those of you who have a lot of money you can see there's some gold looking things on it the front has gold then at the end you have some gold as well gold would be pretty heavy so i'm not sure if it's just a paint job or if they've actually used gold i don't know 47 is rich but this uh, for someone who's supposed to lie low this definitely isn't lying low having a golden chopper not the thing then we have this uh, speedboat blue and purple in my opinion a pretty decent coloration um i'm not sure purple really fits in terms of camo i think blue and maybe green or maybe blue and some other darker blue you know if you're going for camo i don't know what you're going for but it's a decent paint job i'm not complaining it's a decent unlock and finally we get to the master freelancer suit this suit some people really love it some people really hate it I don't have an exact opinion on it to be honest i do like it it does not fit uh, the character of agent 47 but neither does looking like a british gopher or justin bieber so to be honest you know take it or leave it it is what it is at this point and i do like it i think it's pretty good looking i think uh, for an assassin it's a very good looking suit the back of it having the level 100 maybe not the best thing in the world maybe it could have been implemented a little bit better that level 100 if they wanted to feature it maybe it could have been a little bit more um it could have looked a little bit better i guess but uh overall i'm not complaining i think it's a decent suit i wear it all the time when i'm playing so yeah can't complain overall i would say the master unlockables are pretty decent but at the same time i don't think they're crazy out of this world great I, if i have to give them a rating i don't even know how to rate them because there's like a hundred over a hundred of them so it's very difficult to really give them a rating but i think for what it is it's uh i would say decent is the word that come to mind maybe a 4 out of 10 5 out of 10 6 out of 10 somewhere around there i don't think there's anything really like too crazy to go about i think this is by far one of the best suits in the game for me personally i really do like it and uh you know i i think it's pretty cool and also there are some pretty cool um looking weapons overall so yeah that's the mastery unlocks finally let's talk about stability or their lack of stability i mean seriously the amount of bugs and glitches on every single playstation is ridiculous from being seen through the floor and ceilings to getting stuck on the environment to randomly losing objectives or being spotted from absurd distances the entire game mode is created around you being perfect yet the game is filled with from top to bottom with unsolved issues and problems below average and beyond irritating to play at times and let me say this i've played many games throughout my life as i'm sure have most of you but i have never ever had less fun and a more unenjoyable experience than playing hardcore mode on freelancer it was absolutely garbage difficult for the sake of being difficult but not fun in any way just annoying and time taking if anyone was to ask me if they should grind freelancer to level 100 my answer wouldn't be no but fuck no you shouldn't unless hitman is your biggest passion and all you want to do all day is just play hitman then freelancer is a giant waste of time and more often than not the experience it will deliver isn't necessarily positive playing freelancer can be fun 
but the grind to level 100, at least for me, wasn't fun at all. If I didn't have a YouTube channel, I would have ended it at level 60. I had all the weapons then and I would have been fine if I didn't touch Freelancer again. However, at the same time, do take my opinion with a pinch of salt because I looked at beating Freelancer almost as a job, something that I needed to do, a chore that just had to be completed. So because of that, my experience could be a little tainted. However, at the same time, if I didn't look at it that way, I don't think I would have been able to complete it at all. Like I said, I would have quit back at level 60. That's when, at least for me, the excitement and fun of Freelancer started to completely drift. Once I got all the weapons, I had nothing to look forward to in the game mode. Then it just became a more or less a mindless grind to get to 100. I can't rate Freelancer. It's an impossible experience to rate. Though I will say this. Freelancer was a good update and it did give players a lot of new things to do. However, at the same time, it can be a game mode that is very draining and I feel although in the beginning and middle you can have a lot of fun and be super passionate about it, by the end you will be a lot less inclined to come back to Hitman period because not only does it burn you out, but it burns you out bad. Or at least that was my experience. Let me know yours in the comments below. Drop a like if you enjoyed, subscribe for more content. Thank you very much for watching, think about becoming a member if you'd like to support the channel, and until next time, see you guys.